Happy St. Patrick's Day! As a proud Irishman, I love to celebrate St. Patrick's Day and this year I'm going all out because I'll be teaming up with YouTubers across the world. We'll be cooking recipes from Ireland's wonderful food heritage, tasting treats from the land of leprechaun and of course proving to you that we don't just eat potatoes. Today I'm teaming up with Beth from Entertaining with Beth and we're both coming up with our favourite lamb recipes. Did you know that in Ireland there is over 3 million sheep? Nearly as many sheep as there are people. There you go. Fun fact of the day. Beth's channel is full of great recipes and entertaining ideas. So let's go over and check out what she's got up her sleeve. Hey Donald, greetings from Los Angeles. I have to say, Americans get very excited for St. Patrick's Day, mostly because a lot of us can trace our family's ancestry back to Ireland, including my own mother, whose family immigrated back in the 1800s from County Cork and settled in Boston. So for that, I am half Irish and always looking to celebrate every year. So your roast leg of lamb looks fantastic. What a great idea for St. Patrick's Day. So I thought I would riff off that lamb dish and show you my take on a deconstruction lamb stew. Now I say deconstructed because this dish is a little bit easier, a little bit quicker than a traditional lamb stew and I thought that was a good idea since St. Patrick's Day this year is on a weeknight. So anyway you can head over to my channel, the recipes over there and see how to make the deconstructed lamb stew and in the meantime Donald I am excited to learn how to make your roast leg of lamb. I think that sounds like a great idea not only for St. Patrick's Day but also for Easter. I might just take you up on it and make it for my family then. All right so let's get to your recipe and happy St. Patrick's Day. Such fun collaborating. Thanks for having me. Bye. How good does that lamb stew sound? So while Beth is making that I'm going to crack on with a brilliant roast leg of lamb. It is a classic roast and it is so easy to make. I'm going to stuff mine with a bit of rosemary and some garlic and then serve it up with some braised baby gem, some peas and a brilliant little gravy. So it starts off with a knife with your leg of lamb. You want to make little sharp incisions. Keep them in about like one centimeter apart. Take your time with this. You want to make sure that you get a complete covering of that wonderful garlic and rosemary all the way over your lamb. So I've got some wonderful little garlic clove studs and all I've done is just slice them up and kind of made them into nice little kind of studs. These now go into the lamb and stuff them all the way over. Rosemary is a brilliant hardy herb and it's one that grows in my garden pretty much all year round. It has this wonderful kind of aromatic fragrance and it goes so, so well with lamb. They are flavour friends. So it's time to get our lovely sprigs and you just need to shove little sprigs of these in amongst the garlic and take your time with this because once this goes into the oven it's going to slowly cook and all those flavours are going to infuse into the lamb. So it's worth just kind of taking your time. As soon as you have that rosemary and garlic stuffed into the lamb, it's time to drizzle over a bit of oil. I'm using some rapeseed oil, but you could use canola oil, you could use sunflower oil, you could use olive oil, it's totally up to you. Just give it a good drizzle over the top, try not to get it all over the counter like I have. Be generous here, just so that it kind of crisps up the outside. And then one of the most important parts of a good roast lamb is some sea salt rubbed over the top. So be generous with the sea salt here. So I'm just going to finish it off with a sprinkle of black pepper over the top and this now goes into the oven at 180 degrees for 40 minutes per kilogram of your lamb. Now if you're worried about that you can use one of these cooking temperatures and you're looking for 140 degrees Fahrenheit for it to be cooked all the way through at its thickest part. So this now goes into the oven to roast off. And by the way, top tip, if it does start to brown and blacken a little bit too much just cover it with some tin foil. Oh yes, my Irish lads and lassies, we have a beautiful smell in the kitchen and there is one reason. Check out this wonderful lamb. How beautiful does that look? Okay, so I'm going to get it out. It smells. It's just one of those amazing smells in the kitchen. There's nothing better than the smell of roast leg of lamb. Check that out. It's come out and look at all that beautiful lamb. It's juicy. It's golden. It looks absolutely incredible. So now, I'm going to stop talking for a moment and we need to transfer this out because what I'm going to do is use the juices that are in the base of the pan to make a really nice gravy. So just try and transfer this across to another chopping board and then leave this under some tin foil to rest completely. So while that's resting, come over here and check out all these lovely little brown bits. This is where the beauty of our wonderful lamb gravy is going to come from. So I'm going to take this pan put it on the heat and deglaze it with a bit of red wine. Get in a good glug of any old red wine you have. 
Get a spatula and just push out all those wonderful brown bits and they'll come off the pan really easily. Once you're confident that you have all those lovely brown bits down and off the pan, I'm going to transfer this kind of carefully into a little saucepan. Now that we have the bones of this really great gravy ready, I'm going to stick the saucepan back over the heat and turn off this little one. We're going to bring it to the boil and we're going to simmer this down and reduce it with a little bit of beef stock. But before I do that, and to make sure that this thickens up nicely, I'm going to take a few tablespoons of that mixture and mix it down with some flour. This will basically form a roux and this will help to thicken our gravy. Once you've got a really nice smooth roux, get it straight back into the pan and give it a good whisk up. As soon as that comes to the boil, it's time to get in there with some boiling hot beef stock, and this will just really intensify the flavor. If you have lamb stock, by all means use that, but most people will have beef stock in their store cupboards. My gravy is looking really good now. It's reduced right down, and it's become nice and thick. So I have my gravy, I have my lamb, and to serve this up, I have the most beautiful braised baby gem, lettuce leaves, with some peas and some spring onions, and this is a great little springtime dish to serve alongside that lamb, which I just can't resist but to take a little scalp off and try it, because this is just the best part of cooking lamb. You just get that nice little bit of slivery lamb, dipped with a nice bit of sea salt, this is possibly the cook's treat. This is if you've roasted off the lamb, this is what you get to look forward to. Oh, oh, so good. That just instantly reminds me of my granny's kitchen. She used to always make a roast leg of lamb on a Sunday with garlic and rosemary, and that is just an instant reminder of it. So tasty, so delicious. If you want the full recipe, it is in the box below on my website. And of course, make sure to check out Beth's channel where she's made a fantastic Irish stew with lots of lovely lamb. Make sure to check out our full St. Patrick's Day playlist, which has lots of great Irish-inspired recipes. Subscribe, like, comment, do all those wonderful things, and have a great St. Patrick's Day. See you soon, guys.